Hello Internet, we're going back to our stream saver project today uh, and we're going to be working with this. Uh, I need to select it and actually run it, but we have this flying cube, which is effectively our player. Uh, we need to make it shoot. That, that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, and since this is going to be played on a stream, there's not going to be a shoot button. It's just going to constantly shoot. So there's just going to be a timer in the background that's going to just make it shoot a projectile. Uh, and so there's going to be a gun, effectively, that you uh, manipulate, and then a projectile. Uh, and those are going to be two separate classes that we're going to be kind of working with. So we need to make both of those. <laughs> so I don't have anything for that, so we're just going to kind of make it up as we go. Uh, and I'm going to try to make this generic enough so that uh, if enemies are going to be shooting as well, we can reuse a lot of the same stuff for them and it should just make everything a lot easier. So weapons? I don't I don't know particularly the best name for this, but we're going to we're going to go with that. So time projectile launcher, which is just going to have a countdown and just constantly shoot things. Uh I'm thinking there might be upgrades, but I don't really have any planned right now, so right now there are no upgrades intended. Uh, it's just going to be one thing that shoots in a straight line. Uh, and there's going to be one like super weapon that you're going to be able to activate that is like a beam that just goes and, uh, and, and destroys everything in the path. Uh, that's separate. We're not going to do that today. We'll probably get to that in, in another video. Still need to kind of work out some of the, that because that's kind of effect based. And for that, we, we need to know how, how the effect's going to look. So. Uh, I need to come up with an art style uh, other than cubes. So for now, we're just going to work with projectiles. I think that's probably the best place to start. Oh, that is loud. <laughs> All right. Git context is not loading. I broke Visual Studio. Don't know why, don't know how, but it's broken. Uh, and that, that was that error. Everything else works, so, so we're fine, but yeah. All right, so we need a timer. That's going to be private. And that's just going to keep track internal track of wind to fire projectiles. And the next thing we're going to need is a public float. Uh, I don't know what to call this. <laughs> Reload time. Sure. Uh, we need to give this a type, the timer. Uh, that's that's definitely not going to work without a type. And then the final thing is just a, a game object that we're going to be spawning. So game object uh, projectile. And so what this is going to do is count up the timer. If it gets above the reload time, we're going to subtract the reload time from the timer and create a projectile at a specific position. So public transform uh, projectile origin. And that's just going to be where the projectile spawns. Uh, that's like the origin of the projectile. It'll, it'll allow us to control, say, the direction. Uh, so if we added two of these and had them at different angles, we could get like a V shape and things like that. Uh, so reload time. That's not what I want. Timer plus equals our time delta time. So just increment this timer. And then uh, if the timer is greater than our reload time. So if we've gone above this reload time, we are going to spawn a projectile. That scrolled weird. Uh, so if the timer is greater, we need to spawn a projectile. But first, I'm actually just going to take timer minus equal to reload time. Uh, when I do things like this, I like to do this instead of set it back to zero. Uh, because when we're counting up with a timer, there is going to be that slight floating point uh, error, I guess. And so I kind of try to preserve that across uh, because instead of just like crunching that extra, like let's say we have 10 ticks or, or it takes nine ticks in a second or something. Uh, and we have like that extra time. I'm totally failing at math, but it's, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> effectively, if we get above that, if we have like 0.1 over it, I want that point 0.1 whatever to carry across uh, because that's going to change and make the other, uh, the next projectile spawn even sooner uh, and hopefully keep it at more of a consistent rate. Um, 
Yeah. yeah. That, that's just a personal preference. It might have no effect. Well, probably doesn't. But anyway, <laughs> after we do that, we can create a projectile at our projectile origin dot position and the origins oops uh, rotation and so that just creates the projectile and that's it we don't need to do anything else because that's literally it um, yeah I, I don't know it's not it's not anything fancy it doesn't need to be so yeah we're done <laughs> We do need a projectile though, because this is just going to spawn things and just place them in a spot. Uh, we don't really want that. So let's just add to our ship. Uh, actually, no, let's put it on the cube. That way when our cube rotates, because uh, it rotates as it goes up and down, it will actually uh, move where the projectile spawns uh, just a little bit. It shouldn't be too big of a deal. So projectile. Let's call this what it is, a laser origin. Sure. Uh, we're going to need it be, to be in the scene view to actually see where we're talking about. Sort of in the center. Let's move it down just a little bit and a little bit forward. Just so it's kind of spawning it right at the front there. So we should be able to actually see something, hopefully. Uh, and so now uh, we need something to actually spawn. Totally skipping a step here. Uh, so let's assign this laser origin to our projectile origin. So those are synced up. Uh, so our projectiles will all spawn at that laser origin. And then we have this game object. We need to assign something to that. Uh, we'll just set like a 0.5 reload time and give it a cube. Uh, did I want to use that cube? I may not have. That's from the scene. Let's not do that one. We don't have any actual assets. <laughs> Whoops. Let's create just a laser. Sure. Uh, this doesn't matter super amounts, but we're going to do it anyway. And rotate that to like point that, just so it's kind of at an off angle. So there's some, uh, the bottom part is shaded different than the top. And let's just reverse this there. And this will be our laser. And then the actual art is going to be our laser effect. And so we can get rid of our box collider. We don't need that for this effect. That, that's just extra stuff. The laser here can be shrunken down just a little bit. Or, sorry, increased. So it's just a little bit more prominent. Uh, just so it's easier to see on like smaller resolution screens like a phone. Uh, I kind of want it a little bit bigger. And then let's save this somewhere. Don't know where. So we're going to put it in here under a, a weapons, I guess. <laughs> and there we go. We have a laser. Great. Is that what I wanted? Was that rotated right? Nope. <laughs> I didn't think so. All right, we need to rotate it along the x-axis, but I can't do it. So the top one, uh, the parent, was rotated 45 degrees. If we do that, when we spawn it, since we're setting the rotation, uh, that's just going to override it. That's not what we want. So we need to set it here instead. That should fix everything. We also could have just rotated this laser origin by 45 degrees and not mess with the projectile at all, and it would have worked. But Anyway, that's just the effect I want, so that's what we're going to do. And so if we start this, we should just start spawning lines. Ooh, that is not right. Why are they all spawning super big? Well, that's unfortunate. Um, I guess we can move this scale into this laser effect so that this uh, thing spawns with a more consistent uh, size. Maybe that's what's happening. Uh, so when it's instantiating, it's overriding the scale. But it doesn't appear to be what's happening. Also, it's called cube. Ooh, <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, so this is like the max height where I am right now. Uh, so I obviously can't go any higher, but this is creating 
an interesting effect. It's not what I want, not even close. But it's interesting, and I don't know why those are called cubes. Oh, because because it's spawning the cube. <laughs> so I had it set to, uh, I pointed it at this cube here. That's what was going wrong. Whoops. <laughs> totally screwed that up. Uh, that's on me. So now we have lasers. And so as we go up and down, you can see they kind of spawn. They're a little bit different uh, rotations just because that's how this works. We rotate the cube and the uh, shooting majig is attached to the cube, so that rotates as well. And so everything just rotates. Great. It's sort of, sort of what we want. <laughs> the lasers don't move. They're just kind of sitting there. That's not right. <laughs> we should fix that. Also, they don't go away. Uh, normally when I'm doing something like this, I like the projectiles to time out after a while because if they, for whatever reason, go through something or miss and just go off into infinity, I don't want them there forever because eventually they're just going to waste resources and be off at like six million or something ridiculous and nobody's going to see them and they're just, just a waste. So we need to delete those after a while. So let's do that. <laughs> let's create something called a projectile timeout. And then just give it a, a time to timeout after. Actually, I don't even think we need that. Why didn't you open? Huh. Okay, there we go. Being weird. Destroy 10. Does this work? Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's all we need to do. <laughs> I'll get to that in a sec. So we need a, a timeout like this, and we can just initialize that to like 10. This will be seconds, measured in seconds. And then what I was playing with here is destroy this dot game object after a timeout period. So destroy is what you use to get rid of things in your scene, but it also has this weird fun option where you can give it a float as a second parameter, which is a, a period that it just disappears after, which means after it's elapsed, after the time period has elapsed, that game object gets destroyed. So it's like a, a delayed destroy, which means you don't need to constantly keep track of a timer or do anything fancy. You literally just call this and then 10 seconds later it's gone. I uh, believe it does it with coroutines, but I could be wrong. So yeah, that's pretty much all we need for this. This should time out our projectiles after 10 seconds. So let's uh, add our laser back like so scene view there we go laser blog all right and attach a projectile timeout to it and apply so that should mean all of our lasers will time out after 10 seconds that's probably too long for this demo <laughs> whoops uh, so after 10 seconds that one should disappear and then all these other ones should start going away as well and then the final thing we need to do is actually make them move. So that one's gone, and all the other projectiles are slowly kind of fading away as well. Now we need to move them. <laughs> That's also hopefully easy. I'm going to use raycasts to detect if they hit anything, uh, because we need to, to know that they hit something, so they can actually like apply damage and things like that. Uh, so raycasts is usually what I use. We could use physics. Uh, you, there's like physics.triggerenter and things like that. That will work, but I prefer raycasts. Uh, I just think they're more versatile and, and you can just use them more easily. And you, they're easier to script. So yeah, <laughs> that's why. Projectile movement, cool. Uh, public float, that's not how you spell float, speed. All right, so our projectile is gonna have a specific speed and we already have the timeout. So the timeout is a separate script handled completely separately. So think this movement can be added to anything and it will just move things at that speed. 
along its uh, z-axis. And so what this is going to do, just as the most basic thing it can, is just do position uh, plus equals speed times this dot transform dot forward. That's not going to be right. We want right. Uh, this gets a little bit weird. <laughs> I'm doing right here instead of forward because uh, I'm on a 2D plane and forward is into the screen. Uh, because that's the z-axis, which is not right. We don't want to do anything on the z-axis. Uh, so right and left is what we're talking about. I want to move it to the right because that's the way it's going to go. And yeah, thinking about that, that may not be what I want. I may change that later uh, and make everything on the z-axis. That might just be more intuitive. Yeah, actually. No. Let's do right. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I'm right here. I was kind of rethinking that, but I think I'm I think this is correct. So this should all work. Speed should work. Uh, and then we just need to stick this on the laser and actually get the thing to go vroom. And then we're good. <laughs> well, not good. This is not not what we want, but it, it's close enough. This should at least get things to move right like this. Uh, so now we have bullets uh, sort of a it's a consistent pattern you can kind of see it uh, and yeah that's pretty much pew pew <laughs> but now we need it to actually hit things so what I'm going to do is add a another cube and just stick this in the center and put it like here now this is not going to work initially because things are just going to go right through it. We don't have any way of detecting if we're hitting anything or anything fun like that. So instead, we need to do a ray cast, which is going to shoot a ray forward and actually see if it hits anything. And if it does, we're going to actually, yeah, deal with that. Uh, so let's do a vector three. I mean, uh, we don't actually need to do this, right? Because so this is the Array takes a position or a direction and a length. Speed times the time delta is the length. So length is speed times the time delta. And then the transform dot right is our length or direction, sorry. So this creates array equals a new array with this dot transform dot right. And length. Cool. Uh, does it not like that? Origin direction. Ah, it needs an origin, not a not a not a length. Length comes later. That's the raycast bit. <laughs> Going crazy. Transform dot position. Cool. So we'll just start it ourselves and cast forward. Uh, this is going to be a little bit incorrect <laughs> because we're casting it forward, but only the amount we've moved. We're not accounting at all for the length of the actual projectile, which is some distance. So public float projectile length, and we're just going to introduce this as sort of a constant, which means that the length is going to be the speed times the time delta, so the amount of distance you've traveled plus the length of the projectile. That's how far forward you need to check. And so now that we've got all of this, we can do a if uh, physics.raycast. It's occurring to me that we might want to use 2D physics for this. <laughs> but we're going to use 3D because why not? Uh, this might enable some interesting things, or I may change it. I don't know yet. Uh, so this is going to take the ray and then a length. If I'm remembering correctly, my intelligence has kind of disappeared, so we're just kind of guessing at this point anyway. Uh, so if we hit this, we'll just destroy our game object. So if we hit anything, we're done. Just poof. Uh, and we can actually add some fun hit effects. Uh, what I like to do for handling projectile hits uh, and I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it, but this is something that I found that works uh, and is pretty 
flexible as far as doing things is Unity has a feature called uh, RPCs, Remote Procedure Calls. Uh, I don't think that's what they're called. They're called messages. RPCs are different. Ignore that entirely. Uh, RPCs are with a network. <laughs> We're not doing that. That's totally, totally, totally wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Send message. Send message is a, a way Unity objects can send messages between one another. So if I do a send message onto what I hit, which is not what I just wrote there, it's just an example. If I do send message, uh, it will invoke a function on everything that is in that object or attempt to. Uh, so if there's something there, it will invoke that thing. Uh, we are going to do this in a fun way. But uh, effectively, what we want to do is say um, on projectile hit and send some sort of information. So the parameter we want to send, uh, in this case, I'm going to say like 10 as sort of a, a damage. Uh, we probably want more than that, but like, uh, I don't know, the team you're on or the color you are or wh whatever. Uh, but that is sort of how this works. And then there's a third thing which is our uh, send message options. Uh, there's two options here. The default is require receiver. We don't want that in this case because a lot of objects like that box I put in the scene are not going to be able to receive on projectile hit. They have nothing that knows what that is, uh, which means it's going to throw an error unless I say don't require a receiver. And so this is just going to send a message and ignore if nobody can see it. And so there we go. Done. <laughs> kind of a mess, but that's how that works. So instead of calling this on our current game object, what I'm going to do instead is do ray dot. Uh, what? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I have missed an entire point. Uh, ray cast hit. We need to get what we hit back, which I totally didn't even think about. There we go. Uh, this is backwards. We need the length on the other side. Just forgetting how this works and IntelliSense is gone. Uh, so when, we, when you do an output here, it expects your variable not to be initialized. So if hit is initialized, we're done. Uh, it's not going to work. But if it isn't initialized, it's going to effectively give this raycast function a second return type which means that as well as returning a boolean we also are going to set this hit which means after the after this has been called hit now has all the in fun information about the things we hit which means i can get uh the thing that we hit that those were words yes but they didn't make any sense uh collider game object there we go so this is going to get the collider that we hit and then get the game object attached to that and then send a message that says something hit you do this <laughs> and then it's going to explode our projectile and if nothing else happens then it just moves our projectile forward cool that's pretty much everything we need to do hopefully <laughs> hopefully i didn't miss anything uh one thing we can do we can trim all of this down so these are duplicate now. So the length is the, can we turn that down? Because we have the projectile length there. We might not be able to. Yeah, okay. We'll keep this for now. We can, I can make this better, but eh, it's, it'd be a little bit hard to do it uh, quickly and well. So we're going to hold off on that and I will revisit that when I'm ready to think that through. Uh, but for now, this should be good. We destroy a game object if we hit anything, which means if I shoot that cube, it should go away. Uh, I want one more thing, which is just going to display, uh, damage display. That's what we're going to call it, because why not? Which we're going to stick on that cube, which is going to say, uh, log out a message that says something hit me, just so we know that our message is actually being received. Uh, we can try that both with this enabled and with it disabled just to see that it works both with a cube that is uh, receiving messages and one that isn't. Why is it so hard to open these things? Okay, there we go. 
on projectile hit, and it accepts a float. Float damage. And so we just need to debug log uh, projectile hit with damage, damage. Done. Cool. So that's it. That's all we need to do. That is done. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. That, that, that's, that's it. <laughs> so I'm not going to attach that script. I just wanted to get it done. Uh, and so everything's compiled. We can just hit play. And then this should actually hit that. And you can see the projectiles aren't coming out the other side, which if I go back up, they will. So we're actually correctly hitting this thing. And it's not throwing any errors. My console doesn't, it hasn't filled with errors, which is good because that is no fun. Uh, so if we put this in damage display on our cube, now we should actually see these console messages come through that say, hey, you hit something. Uh, so here we go, projectile hit with damage 10, which means our message is actually coming through. We're actually seeing that, which is great uh, because that's how we're going to actually inflict damage. So if that didn't work, then uh, this won't work at all. And we need something entirely different that was more complicated. So yay. <laughs> uh, the other way I've seen projectile damage done is trying to get the component that stores health on the component you hit and then like subtracting from it. I feel like that's less good. This sort of uh, says I hit you, now figure out what to do with it, which means you can apply like armor and stuff uh, on the object and everything kind of just gets encapsulated and it just receives a bunch of mess messages. That has been a lot cleaner for me. Uh, maybe you guys know a better pattern, but that's the one that I've found that works. Uh, with the new way Unity is doing, like, uh, uh, what's it called? Entity control system? That doesn't sound right. <laughs> but anyway, with that new thing, I, I imagine all of this is going to change. And I should probably go and learn that, but I haven't found the time. So anyway, we have projectiles, and they work. And they hit things, and they do all sorts of cool stuff. So yeah, <laughs> that's it. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't have anything else to add to this, but this is just super basic projectiles. There's not anything crazy going on here and there doesn't need to be like one of the advantages of this whole unity style of programming with all these components is you can write a lot of really simple, really basic things and kind of pull them all together into more complicated things. And that's sort of what we're going for here because this could get really out of hand if we try to do it all at once. Uh, so I'm trying to keep this under wraps because I'm hoping that this can be something that you guys can kind of poke at and, and update and change. So yeah, uh, we didn't actually add any projectile length, but it still works, so that's good. Uh, I believe that's because this cube is not moving. If it was, I imagine we'd run into issues. <laughs> Because what would end up happening is it would move over the uh, raycast, and then uh, raycasts do not hit each other if they're already inside the object. So if you do a raycast from inside of an object, it won't hit that object. And so uh, part of the advantage of adding that length is it gives you sort of that extra buffer, which means as long as this cube doesn't move that projectile length, we should be good. Uh, if it does, then it's moving too fast anyway. And physics is probably broken anyway. <laughs> but yeah, there's a bunch of ways to do this, but this is my way. So yeah, that's it. If you guys have any other suggestions on how we could improve this or change this or do anything else fun, let me know in the comments. I'd love to check it out. But yeah, that's it for this video. So until next time, see you in today.